Good morning. It's Tuesday, June 30th, and on your screen is a live view of the Falcon 9 awaiting its 410 Eastern Standard Time launch from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. My name is Shiva Bharadvaj, and I'm a space operations engineer here at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. And welcome to our webcast coverage for the GPS-3 Space Vehicle Number 3 launch for the United States Space Force. Now, the Global Positioning System, or GPS, payload is one that you're probably familiar with. GPS satellites provide a diverse range of positioning and timing services for both civil and military purposes. Now, the United States has been launching GPS satellites for the last 42 years, and today marks the 75th launch. This launch is also particularly special because it honors the memory of Colonel Thomas Falzerano, commander of the 21st Space Wing, Peterson Air Force Base in Colorado. The Space Force has dedicated this mission to his memory, and we will hear directly from General Raymond and others who knew and worked with him just before we enter into the first coast phase later on in the broadcast. Now, let's take a closer look at the vehicle that will launch the GPS-3 satellite and help us honor the memory of Colonel Thomas Falzerano. On your screen is a view of Space Launch Complex 40 with the Falcon 9, our two-stage liquid-fueled launch vehicle, and it's getting ready for launch. Falcon 9 stands about 230 feet tall, which is greater than the wingspan of a 747 aircraft. Now, the bottom two-thirds of the vehicle is a brand new first stage, and its job is to accelerate the entire vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere up to the edge of space. Now, unlike our first GPS-3 mission from December in 2018, we will be attempting to recover the first stage on our drone ship named Just Read the Instructions, and it's currently stationed about 350 nautical miles off the east coast of Florida. We worked with our customer following our earlier GPS-3 mission to ensure that we maintained more than enough performance margin for both the primary mission and a chance at recovery today on that first stage. Now above the first stage is the second stage, and about two and a half minutes into flight, it will separate from the first stage. Then it'll ignite its single Merlin vacuum engine to carry the GPS-3 satellite into a highly elliptical orbit. The apogee, or the highest point of that orbit, will ultimately end up at about 20,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface, at which point the satellite will then separate and then perform some burns to enter into a circular medium Earth orbit about 20,200 kilometers above the Earth. You'll also notice that the second stage fuel tank is painted gray today, and that's so we absorb a little more heat from the sun while we're not eclipsed by the Earth that helps the fuel tank stay at the proper temperature for today's mission uh, when we go into the Earth's shadow. Now, at the very top of the rocket is the payload fairing. The GPS-3 satellite is currently enclosed inside of it, and it's 17 feet in diameter. It protects the satellite from aerodynamic heating, loads, and contamination during the ascent portion of the mission. But once we reach the vacuum of space, we'll jettison those fairing halves back to Earth while the second stage continues to take the satellite to orbit. The fairing halves that we're using today are brand new, and we will be attempting to recover them using our recovery ships, Miss Tree and Miss Chief. However, we aren't planning a catch attempt today, and instead we'll scoop these out of the water later on this evening. Now, finally, next to the rocket is that large truss structure that we refer to as the Transporter Erector, or TE. The TE rolls Falcon 9 out to the launch pad, raises it to the vertical launch position, and also routes power, fluids, and communication to both the rocket and satellite. Good afternoon. I'm John Innsbrucker, Falcon 9 Principal Integration Engineer here at SpaceX. We're coming up on nine and a half minutes to launch and to get to this point, we rolled Falcon 9 out to the pad Sunday night, about 41 hours before launch, and we went vertical on the pad at roughly 10 a.m. local time yesterday. The chief engineer held his technical pole at T-minus one hours, and the launch director held a propellant load and launch go, no-go pole at T-minus 38 minutes. The vehicle is healthy. We are currently working, no issues. Now, if we do have to call a hold on today's launch, we have a backup opportunity tomorrow at 3.51 Eastern time in the afternoon. That's about four minutes earlier than today's opening of the window. Now, right now, we're targeting the end of the window just after 16.10 Eastern time for liftoff. Now, after the go-no-go poles, Falcon 9 has been loading propellants, began at T-minus 35 minutes. We began with fuel going into both the first and second stage, oxidizer into the first stage. For fuel, we use a refined form of kerosene known as RP-1 rocket propellant grade one. Our oxidizer is a super chilled liquid oxygen and we call that LOX. 
Now currently the second stage that you can see outlined with that gray paint that Shiva mentioned, that fuel is completely loaded. We're still loading fuel on the first stage. That'll go until T minus six minutes. And as you can see from the plume streaming off of the first and second stage LOX tanks, we are continuing to load liquid oxygen onto both of those stages right now. We're also loading helium gas on board storage vessels on the first and second stage. The Falcon 9 uses helium gas as a pressurant in the fuel and the LOX tanks. As the Merlin engine pumps pull RP-1 and LOX out of the tanks, we have to fill the empty vol volume, what we call ullage, with helium that is heated by the engine. Heating the helium helps expand it to fill the tanks. Now at T minus seven minutes coming up here, engine chill will begin, we'll hear that call out. This is where we allow a small amount of the super chill liquid oxygen to flow past the turbo pump inlets. That cools them down to avoid thermal shocks when we light the Merlin engines at T minus two seconds. Finally, you can see to the left of the rocket is the transport erector, or what we also call the strong back. That will retract away from the rocket about two degrees at T minus four minutes. That gives the necessary clearance for Falcon 9 to begin the liftoff sequence. Now on top of Falcon 9, we have the spacecraft. The spacecraft team has transitioned the GPS satellite to internal battery power. That happened at T minus 15 minutes. They're working no issues and there are no further actions required of the satellite before launch. We're launching out of the eastern range, and currently the range is go. They're ready to support. The air and the sea space is clear around us. They've also been launching the balloons for us to help get the weather. The weather from clouds, lightning, uh, electric fields right now is go. What we've been watching is the upper altitude winds. The gradient from one altitude to the other has been borderline where we might exceed the load capability of the Falcon 9. We are currently go. We will get one last weather balloon piece of data coming up here in a couple of minutes. But right now, all systems continue to be go for a liftoff just after 4.10 p.m. Eastern time. Now, as we mentioned earlier, today's mission is for the United States Space Force, and we're launching the GPS-3 Space Vehicle Number 3 as our payload. Now we'll hear from Lieutenant Colonel Margaret Sullivan, Material Leader of the GPS-3 Space Vehicles, and Tanya Ladwig, Acting Vice President of Navigation Systems at Lockheed Martin, to learn more about today's satellite. We use GPS every day. Today, everyone has GPS technology in their pocket. Twenty-five years of space-based position, navigation, and timing, supporting the entire world. GPS touches the lives of everyday people all the time. It's changed the way we work, it's changed the way we play, with over four billion users worldwide. We're already preparing for the next generation of GPS satellites with our GPS-3 follow-on contract. And we're inserting greater technology for greater capability. The brand new United States Space Force owns this premier asset and provides this position, navigation, and timing service to everyone. And for all personnel on the cat down we have an update from GNC informing us we have a good weather balloon proceeding on with the countdown. T minus four minutes, 20 seconds and count. Today's GPS-3 Space Vehicle 3 mission is dedicated by the Space Force to the memory of Colonel Thomas Falserano, and we will hear directly from General Raymond and others who knew and worked with him just before we enter our first coast phase later on in the broadcast. Now we're currently just inside four minutes from liftoff. We did get the good news just a moment ago that the latest weather balloon is go for launch. So we're gonna continue to count down. We've begun retracting the transporter erector strong back away from the Falcon 9. You can see it on your screen. Moves back a couple of degrees to get us ready for liftoff. Now the Falcon 9 is now moving into the final stages of the countdown. The vehicle remains in good health. 
Fuel loading is complete on both the first and second stages. Liquid oxygen loading will wrap up shortly on the first stage and will complete at T-minus two minutes on the second stage. At one minute before liftoff, you'll hear the announcement that Falcon 9 is in startup. That means the rocket's own internal computers on first and second stage are controlling the launch countdown. The GPS-3 space vehicle continues to be go. The Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the rocket. The weather has turned green for us here in the last minutes, and the range continues to be green for launch. Now again, as a reminder, if we don't launch today, we have a backup opportunity at 3.51 p.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. First stage lock load complete. Launch director has just called out that the first stage LOX load is complete. We're now loading just liquid oxygen on the second stage. Approximately half a minute, LOX loading should complete on stage two. T minus two minutes. That announcement tells us that that chillin' that we began at T minus seven minutes has lasted long enough. And we are good for the ignition sequence on the Merlin engines coming up in just over a minute and 40 seconds. Now coming up in the background, you can see uh, some white plumes coming off of the strong back. Yes, close up the sturdy. There's a nice view. We have completed loading the second stage. We're now draining the liquid oxygen out of the plumbing that goes up that uh, structure alongside the rocket. And as we vent off the gas, you get that nice long plume you see there where that humid Florida air meets the ultra cold uh, gaseous oxygen condenses, giving you that nice white fog. That's normal for this point in the count. Falcons in startup, FTS configured for flight. Launch director is announced. We're inside of a minute. We are in startup on the flight computers. We are also beginning to pressurize stage one and stage two for launch. Mission directors go for launch. We've heard the final call outs. Mission director, launch director are go for launch. So at T minus 30 seconds coming up, all systems are go for launch of Falcon 9 with GPS-3 space seconds. vehicle number three. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. Lift off. Go Falcon, go GPS. plus 40 seconds, we've heard call-outs, and now we're entering the throttle Power bucket, we're powering down the Merlin engines to relieve the acceleration as we get ready for the period of maximum dynamic pressure. We're in the throttle bucket, now we're beginning to power back up. We hear the call-out exiting throttle bucket, the nine Merlin 1D engines Mach going one. back to full power, and we are now supersonic. Max Q. Guidance engineer calls out Max Q, the period of maximum dynamic pressure, or Q, on the vehicle. 
From this point forward, although we go faster and faster, the thinner atmosphere will put less loads on the airframe of the rocket. Coming up next is Chillin of the upper stage engine. We've got a good trajectory. And back in until it started. We've begun the chillin' of the upper stage engine. Power on the Merlin 1D engines looks good. Avionics reports everything is nominal. And we're T plus two minutes into flight. Next major activity in half a minute, shutdown of the nine Merlin engines, separate the first and second stage and ignite the second stage engine to carry GPS and the second stage into the first of two orbits today. This one will be the initial parking orbit. Falcon 9 preparing for Miko. And Miko. Stage separation confirmed. And we've confirmed ignition of the second stage engine after a good stage one, stage two sep. You could see briefly the Falcon 9 first stage in the background. Both vehicles are following nominal trajectories. Call out that both vehicles are following the planned trajectory. First stage continuing to coast to Apogee where it'll then slowly turn around and descend back to the drone ship for landing in the Atlantic Ocean. The second stage engine beginning the long burn to get it into the parking orbit. Acquisition of signal, Maryland. Coming up, fairing deploy. Waiting to see the camera switch forward. Fairing separation confirmed. And we've got fairing separation. The two halves of the Falcon 9 fairing separating, the pneumatic system unlatching the locks that hold it together, and then the pneumatic pushers separating the two halves. As the fairing falls away from the vehicle, we can see on the left side of the screen, the grid fins, the large titanium castings that are mounted to the first stage have deployed. They'll be used later as we come back into the atmosphere for precision guidance of the first stage to land on the drone ship. On the right-hand side, we see the second stage engine Bermuda. continuing to burn. It's at full power. Everything's looking good with the trajectory. So it just passed T plus four minutes into flight. Everything is go on the flight of Falcon 9 with GPS-3, space vehicle number three. T plus four minutes and 25 seconds into flight. We're currently in the first of two planned Merlin vacuum engine burns. Currently looking at the data, the second stage engine burn is nominal. On your left-hand screen, you can see uh, the first stage as it's performing that reorientation that John and I talked about. The uh, grid fins are deployed, and you're seeing some, some thruster plumes there from the attitude control system that are getting it ready so that the nine Merlin 1D engines are pointed towards the atmosphere as it re-enters into uh, Earth's, Earth's atmosphere. Um, beautiful views of the planet beneath both the first stage and the second stage. Second stage is continuing into its burn. Uh, we're expecting this burn both to last to about follow nominal five minutes and 15 seconds. Um, and entry burn will actually begin on the first stage in just about a minute from now. Um, the en during the entry burn, we'll ignite three of the Merlin 1D engines on the, the first stage. That'll give us uh, a signal. chance to slow Entry. down the stage as it ends up re-entering the Earth's atmosphere and reduce the aerodynamic loads as it starts to bite into the thicker parts of the, the air around our planet. You can see the Merlin uh, vacuum engine on your right-hand screen, uh, the nozzle extension there growing red hot. That's expected. And we're really, uh, we have such a long nozzle extension on there to try to get the most, most performance out of the pressure coming out of the thrust chamber on the second stage engine. So coming up here in about 15 seconds is entry burn. Watch for that on your left-hand screen. That'll ignite three of the Merlin 1D engines while second stage continues to burn towards that uh, elliptical orbit with the GPS vehicle on board. Stage one FTS is saved. Stage one, entry burn has started.
or successful ignition of the three Merlin 1D engines on the first stage. We're expecting this burn to last just about 30 seconds. Stage one, energy burn, shut down. And you, saw, you see some bursts there. Um, successful shutdown of the, the engine and some attitude control bursts just to get that orientation right. Now, once we get into the thicker parts of the atmosphere where those grid fins have some aerodynamic control authority, they will do most of the guiding to take the first stage towards our drone ship named Just Read the Instructions, which is about 350 uh, nautical miles off the east coast of Florida. The uh, coming up at about 50 seconds from now, we'll have two events happening about the same time. The first stage will ignite its single uh, center Merlin 1D engine for landing burn. Uh, about the, the same time, first the stage second stage will, it will uh, perform secondary engine stage cutoff. Stage two has entered terminal guidance. Or SECO number one. And while those two things occur about 25 seconds later, the first stage will hopefully touch down on our drone ship uh, in between there, deploying its landing legs. So we'll watch for that on your left-hand screen. Stage two FTS is saved. Drone ship AOS. Stage one landing burn is starting. Ignition of that center uh, Merlin engine on the first stage. So you go one. Successful confirmation of shutdown of the Merlin vacuum engine. The guidance engineer is evaluating the orbit of the second stage now. Nominal parking orbit. Nominal parking orbit. Landing That's exactly what deployed. we want to hear. Landing leg deployment looks like right down the center. And it looks like a successful landed. landing. Recovery operators move into I see a first stage. Excellent. So that, uh, you know, we first flew Falcon 9 10 years ago, actually this month. Since then, it's completed 88 missions, is now the most flown operational rocket in the United States. This mission uh, completed its first landing, and hopefully we'll have many okay. more to Stage come. Um, the vehicle is, is now, we're actually going to enter into our, our first coast phase, now that we know that the uh, second stage is in a successful parking orbit. That coast phase will last about 54 minutes, and will end with our second stage relight at about T plus one hour and three minutes. We're going to come back shortly before that to cover the, the second engine start number two. Now, as we had mentioned earlier, today's mission signal, is dedicated by the Space Force to the memory of Colonel Thomas Falzerano, commander of the 21st Space Wing at Peterson Air Force Base in Colorado. As a leader of the Air Force's fifth largest wing, he commanded a workforce of approximately 4,300 space professionals worldwide. We'll now hear from General Raymond and a number of Colonel Falzerano's colleagues in the Air Force and Space Force about the impact he had on all those he worked with. I can think of no better way to honor Colonel Tom Falzerano and his family than with today's launch of our third GPS-3 satellite from Cape Canaveral. As a former commander of the 45th Operations Group, Tom not only understood the critical importance of our launch capabilities here on the Eastern Range, but he dedicated his entire military career to ensure our nation's space capabilities like GPS continue to fuel our modern way of life and our modern way of war. Tom was an incredible officer, leader, father, and friend who made a difference. He was in his prime as he led the 21st Space Wing at Peterson Air Force Base at such a critical point in our nation's history. Before that, he served as my senior executive officer who worked tirelessly behind the scenes and put in long hours as we established the United States Space Command, our nation's 11th Combatant Command, and the United States Space Force, our newest branch of the armed services. Also signal Maryland's expected. Tom made a difference in the lives of his teammates and those he led. He will always be remembered for caring for his people while taking care of the mission. Tom had that unique gift of connecting with everyone he came in contact with. He always had a smile and a word of encouragement, no matter how demanding the situation was. Tom made a difference in the lives of his family. No one loved family more than he did. And in fact, Tom made us all feel like we were part of his family. As we watch today's Falcon 9 soar high into space, let Tom's legacy be a reminder for all of us 
to make a difference every single day, and how our greatest legacy is found in the relationships and the investments we make in the people around us. My sincere thanks to SpaceX, the 45th Space Wing, and the entire launch team for honoring Tom's legacy. Nobody knew how much the United States and our international allies rely on space capabilities every minute of every day more than Colonel Tom Falzerano. Tom took his mission responsibilities very seriously, but he was passionate about developing and taking care of the people under his command. Although we lost him well before his time, his outstanding legacy will live on through the air and space professionals he led and mentored during his 26-year career. For Tom's family and in honor of his memory, on behalf of the 6,000 professionals of the Space and Missile System Center, we will continue to protect and defend the global commons of space and continue to mentor our people, which he so clearly cherished. Today's launch is dedicated to a warrior, a husband, a father, a friend, an American hero, and a man whose example and leadership will continue to influence our Air and Space Force well into the future. We're dedicating today's launch to Colonel Thomas Falzerano, who was the commander of the U.S. Space Force's 21st Space Wing when he tragically passed away a few weeks ago. In a way, dedicating this GPS-3 launch to Tom is wholly appropriate, as this next generation satellite provides navigational guidance to the nation and the world so did Tom provide lasting guidance and inspiration to all those he led and served with. It has been our great privilege to have known and served with Tom Falzerano, and we are proud to dedicate this launch to him. Colonel Falzerano was a strong, steady leader who was an instant friend to everyone he met. He built lasting connections everywhere he went, and he cared intensely about everyone. Here at the 21st Space Wing, we miss him every day, but we'll honor him and continue our mission, strength and preparedness always. Colonel Falzerano led us by example to give of ourselves completely and compassionately. He taught us what it is to be built to last, to ensure what we build today will outlive us and last for those who come after us. As we reach again to the stars, let us strive even higher to be built to last. It's only fitting this launch today be dedicated to Colonel Tom Falzerano, a great American hero. On behalf of the 50th Space Wing, and the men and women of Sri Air Force Base. Thank you for your service, thank you for your sacrifice, and most importantly, thank you for your partnership over the course of the last year. Colonel Falzerano, teammate, leader, wingman, guide, much like the GPS, you get people to where they ought to be. Proud to have served with you. Colonel Tom Falzerano was a true friend of the 30th Space Wing and a personal friend of mine. I've known Tom for over 20 years when he and I were captains together at the 564th Missile Squadron in Great Falls, Montana. Tom is the kind of person who would do whatever he could to help another airman. He looked out for the folks that he led and he looked out for his peers. And it was my privilege for the time that we were serving as wing commanders together to serve next to him. Chief. Sir, I had the pleasure of working um, with Colonel Fazerano as a teammate in Air Force Base Command Headquarters, consummate professional, consummate leader. You're missed, sir. We're gonna miss you, Tom. It is so fitting that we as an Air and Space Force remember Colonel Tom Fazerano with his GPS launch. Tom spent a lot of time in Florida, and in particular, as the 45th Operations Group Commander, he sat on crew for many of our nation's most important launches. Tom was truly a people person who loved his airmen and enjoyed hearing their stories. He was caring and kind to everyone he met and always found time to brag about his family. To Stacy and the children, it is our honor to represent the 14,000 men and women of Team Buckley and honor Tom for his leadership and service to this nation. For many of us who personally knew him, we'll light a cigar in his honor after a successful launch. Here's a toast. It's my pleasure, along with other leaders of the United States Space Force, to honor the life of Colonel Tom Falzerano during uh, the SpaceX Falcon 9 launch of the next GPS satellite. Colonel Falzerano is a former commander of the 45th Operations Group, and his legacy is felt throughout the Eastern Range. We have a saying in the 45th Space Wing, once a shark, always a shark. And the sharks of the wing are so sad to hear of the passing of Colonel Falzerano. 
We'd also like to pass on our condolences and tell Stacy and the children that our thoughts and prayers are with them. Falsey, I just wanna say thank you for your many years of friendship to me personally and to your many years of service to the United States and the United States Space Force. You left us too young. You are and will continue to be missed. Thank you.
Lost the signal, Kunhilly expected. Lost the signal, Kanger, as expected.
Acquisition signal reef. Thank you. 
Lost the signal, Diego Garcia. That's expected.
AOS Tasmania. And back engine chill started. Welcome back to the webcast of the Falcon 9 mission carrying GPS-3, space vehicle number three for the U.S. Space Force. Now, if you're just joining us, we have a smooth liftoff at 4.10 p.m. Eastern time, followed by separation of the first and second stages. We then had a successful burn of the second stage Merlin vacuum engine, and that placed us in the desired parking orbit. You can see on the screen, we're currently 422 kilometers up. We're passing south of Australia right now. Our next major event coming up in just 30 seconds is the second start of the upper stage engine called SES-2. Currently from the orbit graphic, we are receiving data through our ground station in Tasmania. Second stage is firing settling pulses using cold gas. Make sure propellants are at the top of the inlets of the pump, ready to light that engine. And we've got video of the upper stage engine. And we've got startup confirmation. Propulsion confirms we are up on power on the MVAC D engine. Now the second stage will burn for 44 seconds. And that's gonna add over 2,000 meters per second to the speed of Falcon 9 before we shut it down for the second time. 
Now this shutdown event might be called out as SECO2. Now this burn that we are in right now will place the GPS-3 space vehicle into the required orbit prior to separating it from Falcon 9. Views coming to you from two cameras on the bottom of the second stage as we switch back and forth so that we can see both sides of the engine. We've got shutdown, waiting for orbit confirmation. Nominal insertion orbit. And it was kind of faint in the background, but if you heard it, we have confirmation that the second stage is in a good orbit. This is the one we needed to get to to place the GPS-3 satellite into its transfer. We're now going to head into a second coast phase with the GPS satellite still attached to the second stage. Now the plan is to deploy the GPS satellite in about 24 minutes. Now this wait period is caused by a couple of requirements. First, the second stage begins a slow spin that will provide stability to the GPS satellite when it separates, so it gives it a slow spin. Second, we also have to wait until the GPS satellite itself is in view of two Air Force ground stations, one in Hawaii and one in California. So those steps will be met at T plus one hour and 29 minutes, and that is when the separation of GPS from stage two is planned. So I'm gonna pause commentary now during this coast but we will come back for separation in about 23 minutes at T plus one hour, 28 minutes and 30 seconds. Signal tells me is expected.
Acquisition of signal, Hawaii. Acquisition signal Vandenberg. Acquisition is signal South Texas.
welcome back to our launch coverage of the GPS-3 space vehicle number three mission for the United States Space Force. Now, if you're just joining us, we had an on-time launch at 4.10 p.m. Eastern Time, followed by successful ascent, stage separation, and two second stage engine burns. On your screen is a view of the GPS satellite uh, atop Falcon 9. Now, one note earlier, uh, I had mentioned that today was our 88th successful launch. It's actually our 87th successful launch today. Um, so coming up in just about 15 seconds from now, it's our last major milestone, and that's deployment of the GPS-3 satellite from the second stage. Payload separation confirmed. And successful confirmation of the spacecraft continuing on to perform its mission. From here, the satellite will undergo some activation checks and perform burns to raise into a circular orbit about 20,200 kilometers above the Earth's surface. And with that, that's actually going to complete our primary mission. Now, another note, if you were watching our webcast earlier, uh, we accomplished another recovery objective today, and that is successful securing of both the fairing halves that we jettisoned early on in the mission. So we'll have those for use on a future mission. And that's going to bring our webcast coverage to a close. A uh, great view looking at the GPS satellite moving away from the Falcon 9 second stage. We want to thank the United States Space Force for entrusting us with today's GPS-3 Space Vehicle 3 mission. And we also want to thank the satellite manufacturer, Lockheed Martin. SpaceX is one of two certified providers for national security space launch missions. And we're proud to be able to offer reliable, cost-effective launch services to the U.S. Space Force. We look forward to the additional GPS missions we will be supporting in the future. I also want to give out a special thanks to the 45th Space Wing for the range support out of the Eastern Range today. And finally, with this last view, watching GPS-3, satellite number three, drifting away in the distance, we want to thank all of you, our viewers, for tuning in, and have a good day.